good afternoon and welcome to Connecting Point. My name is Travis Jones. I'm the Minister of, Sp uh, Minister of Spiritual Growth and Development at Hillside Church in uh, Town Lake in Woodstock, Georgia. And uh, it's my honor to, to be with you today. We thought we'd do something a little different with regard to Connecting Point this particular time because uh, the subject matter doesn't lend itself to, to what I normally do. Normally I would put up a scripture and we would work through that particular verse. Uh, but today the subject matter, there's a lot of verses attached to it. So what I thought I'd do is I'd actually share those share those verses and subjects all at once, and then I'll make those available offline that uh, to anybody who wants those. Um, and so today's subject matter is being led by the Spirit or living a Spirit-led life. Now, um, there's a couple places you got to start when you're looking at living a Spirit-led life, when you're specifically talking about the Holy Spirit. I, I know when I grew up, uh, you know, we would refer to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Ghost and, and things like that. And um, I, I've quickly learned as an adult that maybe sometimes when I'm talking to folks that they don't get that when I say Holy Ghost, they think spookiness, and that's not who the Holy Spirit is at any way, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so we got to look at who who the Holy Spirit is first. We have to look at that. So let's let's let me pull up the, the holistic approach to this and say, here are the scripture references, and here's where we're going. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Spirit's role in our lives. The Holy Spirit enables us to know God's comfort, conviction, and character. And then the Holy Spirit equips us with some things. And then we'll move from that into, you know, the how-tos of living a Spirit-led life. So let's jump right into who the Holy Spirit is. Um, in Scripture, there are two words used to describe the Holy Spirit. One is Greek and one is Hebrew. And I'm going to mess up the, the Hebrew all day long. So if you're a Hebrew scholar, uh, you know, no emails or anything like that, I know I've got it wrong already, right? So... Um, the, the, the Hebrew word is ruach, right? And it means a wind, breath, a violent exhalation, a blast of breath. And anytime in the Old Testament that Scripture references the Holy Spirit, it's referenced using this particular word. In the New Testament, Greek, um, it's the word is pneuma, right? Which means pretty much the same thing, a current of air, uh, a blast of breath, a strong breeze. Not nearly as fun to say as the other one, but still those are the two words. So, so who is the Holy Spirit? He is a person. He is a person used, uh, not used, but a person described uh, with two different words in two different parts of the Holy Scriptures. Um, but he's not, uh, uh, he, he's a person who can be related to. That's the best way I know how to put it. A person you can have a relationship with. He is a person just as much as you or I are a person. But he's also the third person in the Holy Trinity. And you'll find very quickly, if you look in Scripture, if you're, if you're new to this, when you look up the word Trinity in the Bible, you're not going to find that word anywhere uh, we actually use that word to describe how God uh, seemingly relates to himself. Uh, throughout Scripture, he relates to himself in the plural. You know, he's talking to Abraham. He uses plural terms like we and our, and Jesus even uses plural terms from time to time in Scriptures. Uh, so uh, he is the third person in the Trinity. So that's who he is. Um, I One of the things I try not to do is refer to the Holy Spirit as it, because that takes away the personhood of, of who he is. So so the, who, who the Holy Spirit is, is he is a person. The second part of this is the Spirit's role in our lives. And I'm going to read you Acts 1, 4 through 8. Now, typically I put a verse up right now, but I'm not, just so you can see this. Um, I want to encourage you to pull out your Bible and pull this out and look at this up. Uh, look, at, look at this up. Look this up with me. I've had a little too much coffee today. Um, in Acts 1, 4 through 8, it says, Gathering them together, he commanded them not to, to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or epics which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power. Now remember that, power when the Holy Spirit comes or has come upon you. And you shall be my witness, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. So there are two things there, two, two parts of that scripture that actually point to the role in our life. He is to give us power, right? And, to, and that power equips us to be witnesses for Christ throughout the entire earth. So his role is for power and equipping. Okay, and so that's his role with that. Now, there are some other attributes that the Holy Spirit actually enables us to know about God, and the a couple things are these: um, He enables us to know God's comfort 
and you, know, you can find that in John 14, 16. His, God's conviction, which is completely different than condemnation, John 16, 5 through 8. And then God's character, and you got 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18. And then Galatians 5, 22 through 23, which is that um, fruits of the Spirit uh, verse that you're very familiar with, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. So the character represented by God. So the Holy Spirit enables us to know God's comfort, God's conviction, and God's character. And the one thing that I did not put on here was God's power. He enables us to know God's power. But he also he also equips us with gifts. And people get a little weirded out when you start talking about uh, the gifts of the Spirit. And I think the main reason that people get a little weirded out by the gifts of the Spirit is because there have been abuses attached to spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are given to the body of Christ to edify and lift up uh, Christ, right? Um, they can be abused, and they have been abused. And I think that's why people really people really get a little bit off-putted, uh, off-putted uh, a little bit weird uh, about them. But you, you do get spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 1, I'm going to read you this as well. It says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of all of them. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does all the work. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives the mes- gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another and to someone else. The one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or another spirit. That's the discerning of spirits. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have, which which gift each person should have. Now, again, people get a little weirded out about that, but you heard a lot of different gifts mentioned um, in that particular verse. And actually, that, that would have been a great verse for me to put up and ask for us to dissect but because there's so much in there. Uh, but you have a spiritual gift. You do have a spiritual gift. If you're a believer, the Holy Spirit has distributed your, those gifts to you, and He does so liberally. Now, your gifts and my gifts aren't the same, uh, and they're not probably at the level of any type of, of sameness, if that makes sense. Um, you know, I may have the, uh, uh, the gift of prophecy at one level, but you may have the gift of prophecy at another. I may have the gift of teaching at one level, and you may be, but we are encouraged to develop those gifts as well. You can find that out later um, in Scripture. So, so he gives us spiritual gifts, but he also gives us spiritual direction. And I want to pull that Scripture up one more time, and that is found in Acts 2, 17 through 21. And it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved is how that one ends. Um, and the direction part is kind of unique. And I've got plenty of stories that I could share with regard to getting direction. And a lot of times when I seek direction from the Holy Spirit, I get more than direction. And, and the only, the only, the only, without going into a real deep story about that, uh, just know that most of the time when you're seeking direction, you're going to get more than direction. So, so let's recap real quick. The Holy Spirit is a person. Um, he has the role in our lives of giving us power and equipping us to be the witness for Christ throughout the entire earth. And then he enables us to know God's comfort, character, conviction, and power. And he equips us with spiritual gifts and spiritual direction. So now it begs the question, how do we live a spirit-led life? How do we live into to that reality? So here, here's how. Here's the how-tos of spirit, living a spirit-led life. Number one, removing all barriers. Removing all barriers. I'm going to read this. It says, what things have you placed between yourself and God? Literally, what things have you placed between yourself and between the God Almighty? Because God doesn't place barriers there. That barrier was removed when Jesus died on the cross for you. It's Most, if not all the time, we place the barriers in between us and Him. So if you were to think real quickly... Are there any barriers between me and the Lord right now? Uh, and if you couldn't think any, you could probably ask, and he would answer that for you. So what barriers have you placed between you and God? You remove those barriers, and you're one step closer to living a Spirit-led life. Number two is learn to listen. Discernment is key, but you have to learn to be quiet before you can hear. 
learn to listen. The Spirit speaks in a still small voice, and He speaks through other people. You learn to listen, learn to discern those things. And like I said, you have to learn to do that, but before you can do that, you got to learn to be quiet. And we have a hard time, specifically in the Western culture, uh, the side of the, 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 the hemisphere, with being alone with ourselves and being quiet. Because a lot of times we'll get alone with ourselves and those feelings that we have that we try to push down and hide that the Holy Spirit is very aware of come up. And we're not ready to deal with those, but He wants to deal with those. And a lot of times those things are barriers as well, and He'll help you remove those. So learn to listen. Discernment is key, but you have to learn to be quiet before you can hear. And then the third one is receive. Receive. Live with an open hand mentality. Um, and, and that's descriptive, descriptive of itself. If you lived with a closed fist mentality, you're never able to receive anything. If you live with an open hand mentality, that means you're ready to receive whatever God has for you. And if you're ready to receive whatever God has for you, he will in turn give because he is the most generous giver that there ever was. So learn to live with an open handed mentality. Receive from him. Number four is relate to him daily. Relate to him daily. Now, now, I know this is so difficult in our, our culture and time to actually set aside time to do that. But when you think about it, we set aside time for a ton of other things, right? In my schedule, I put gym time in there. And I don't always listen to it because sometimes I don't want to go to the gym, but I put gym time in there. I'll go and I'll spend time at the gym developing the muscles that I have or lack thereof. Um, but I'll go and I'll put that on my calendar. But I, if I were to look at my calendar, my calendar should reflect also the spiritual muscles that I'm trying to develop and my relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. I should relate to him daily and spend time with him daily. And then the fifth one is release your gifts. You have spiritual gifts. Scripture specifically says that it does not. Scripture does, it, it says, for I don't want you to be ignorant about these things. And ignorance just means you don't know. But you were given the ability to actually search those things out. Search out. Find out what your spiritual gift is and then release your spiritual gift. And, and there are a whole bunch of them. And if you have them, they work. If you don't, they don't. Um, and just as a, a side note, the church is designed to be the safe place to actually uh, hone those spiritual gifts before they're taken out into the world amongst brothers and sisters in Christ. So I'm going to roll through this one more time. It's remove all barriers. What things are you, are you or have you placed between yourself and God? Learn to listen. Learn to listen. You have to learn to be quiet first. Receive. Live life with an open-handed mentality. Relate to him daily. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in devotion. Just spend time with your creator. And then number five is release your gifts. You release your gifts. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, living a spirit-led life is not always perfect. It's not always easy. Sometimes it's downright uncomfortable. But in that, your purpose is fulfilled. Because the spirit of life was designed to flow to us, reside in us, and then through us. So, I hope this has been helpful today. Um, if not, you can skip over this video. Uh, if it has been, share it with other other folks um, and look up the scripture references. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw them up again while I'm talking. Look up the scripture references. I'll try to make them available offline in a link um, that we'll put in the com comment section here for you. Uh, but if it has been helpful, take it, use it, grow, um, and all those good things. Um, but until next time, this has been Connecting Point. Be blessed. Thank you.